Hi folks, and welcome back to Meaningful Money. Okay, here I am at uh, Penberth Cove. Been here before, no idea what episode number, but um, always a lovely spot. I imagine you can hear the sea uh, in the background, but can pick me up okay on this mic, hopefully. Uh, last time we talked about wills, this time we need to talk about powers of attorney. It's like the little brother to a will, if you like. Whereas a will is designed to uh, let people know what your wishes are after you've gone, a power of attorney is uh, a way of empowering somebody to act on your behalf. If you're still here, you're not dead, but you're unable to look after your own affairs. So it's, uh, there, are, well, there are two types of powers of attorney. What we're talking about specifically is now something called a lasting power of attorney. It used to be called an enduring uh, power of attorney, but now they're called lasting powers of attorney. And there are two types of those. The first is a health and welfare LPA. And the second is a property and financial affairs LPA. Now, as with wills, there are three parties, well, three main people involved um, in setting up an LPA. Well, two people really, but a, an important third one to know about. First one is the donor, so that's the person actually um, you know, setting up the LPA, the person uh, whose affairs will be managed uh, if they are no longer able to. And then there is the attorneys themselves, the people who will do the managing. Uh, third person worth uh, mentioning, though, is something called a named person. And this is somebody who is notified once the power of attorney uh, is um, registered. And that's an important point. You see, you can decide now who you want to look after your affairs if you're not able to. You can decide that now, and you can set up the power of attorney already uh, now, but it doesn't become live until you register it with something called the Office of the Public Guardian. And you can only do that when you are no longer able uh, to look after your own affairs. Um, so that would require perhaps a note from the doctor to say that um, you know, you're uh, losing your mental faculties or whatever, or physical faculties, to enable you to uh, you know, look after the day-to-day -day running of your own affairs. So with a health and uh, welfare EPA, um, they're, they're pretty flexible actually as to you can tell, uh, you can state in the LPA what decisions can and can't be made on your behalf. So it could be that you want to um, give your attorney power over, say, life sustaining treatment. Do you want to be resuscitated uh, if, uh, you know, if that, that uh, should be necessary? Um, what about the care you want to receive? Even down to sort of diet and daily routine, you can stipulate all these things in a health and welfare. Uh, LPA, and the idea is, is that your attorneys, uh, it's their job to make sure that those wishes happen. Under a property and financial affairs LPA, uh, your attorneys then would be responsible for paying your bills and your taxes for you, maybe collecting uh, benefits. So it simply is a way of conferring on somebody else the power to manage your affairs. Now there are limits. So um, an attorney, for example, uh, under a property and financial affairs LPA, can't, for example, make gifts on your behalf. Had an example recently where a friend of mine called because her father and his sister were attorneys for their mother. So this is, you know, an elderly lady who's in a care home who has uh, empowered her son and daughter to look after her affairs. Um, but the daughter was, you know, slightly annoyed at the fact that um, much of her inheritance, I think, uh, was being eaten up by the care fees and had started to make gifts. Um, and you just can't do that. You can't make gifts uh, under a power of attorney. You can't give money away. All sorts of other reasons why that's not a good idea, but there are limits to what your attorneys can and can't do. Needless to say, being an attorney, if you are asked to do it, it's not something to be taken lightly. It's a great privilege and honor in a sense, but it's an onerous responsibility. There are rules to which you must, uh, uh, which you must obey. Um, and you know there is some um, process and uh, it's even a court process very often uh, t to register the thing so not something to be taken on lightly but a great duty if you can do it wow the sun's coming out fantastic so a really good uh, website is the office of the public guardian which is simply publicguardian.co.uk uh, so worth checking that out uh, for a bit more information but everybody should have a will everybody really should have a power of attorney even you know if you're young and you think yeah you know this, this no this is you might just think that this is for old people who go into homes and go do lally or whatever well that's simply not the case uh you know anything can happen 
uh, whereby you could lose the ability to manage your own affairs and it's worth setting it up so that it's ready bearing in mind that it doesn't become live until it's necessary so that's powers of attorney very quickly now uh, no idea what we're going to talk about next i'll uh, think of that in due course uh, but for now from penberth cove thanks very much for watching and i'll see you next time